Hey guys, it's your local high school social studies teacher here. Uh, let me point out public school. So this summer, it seems like every time I ran into somebody and got to know them, and they're like, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, I teach history, I teach government, whatever. And they'd always respond with something like, oh, you don't teach that new woke history, do you? And I'd respond something like, I don't know, what do you consider woke? So let's talk about a couple of things. I had a ton of questions about these hot, hot political topics like critical race theory. What is critical race theory? Let's jump in from, a, from an academic perspective. Critical race theory is something we've been using for at least 30 years. We've been doing this kind of stuff. At, uh, this is my 19th year of teaching. We've been doing critical race theory type stuff easily since I've been teaching. What it is, in its purest form, the way it originated, critical race theory didn't mean criticize like, hey, you know, y'all suck, two thumbs down, zero stars. It's not criticize races. It's let's think critically about race. It's let's lay out all the numbers with an analytical way that can't really be debated and let's see, what do we do about this? If we're really after equality, if we're really after equity, if we're really trying to get all kids on the same page, we're going to have to treat some differently because some have needs that others don't have. Have we had racial oriented policies in the past in America? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Give me an example. We've never been a racist country. Well, I'm not saying racist. No. Racial? Yes. How about the Chinese Exclusion Act? When we were building the Transcontinental Railroad, we shipped in thousands and thousands of Chinese laborers uh, to build the railroads because we were a little short on labor thanks to a thing we call the Civil War. And we also shipped in a bunch of Irish. But then when it was over, we expected them to go home. It's like, hey, your contract is done. We're done with y'all. Hit the boat. But they didn't go home. We didn't expect that. So we passed laws and policies from state to state affecting both the Irish and the Chinese. California was very blatant about it. Chinese Exclusion Act, they couldn't become citizens, they couldn't own property. We had Supreme Court cases that we talked about back when Obama was president, where, uh, you know, are you really a citizen if you were born here and live somewhere else? Well, we had Supreme Court, Supreme Court cases way back then saying, yeah, yeah, if you're born here, you're a citizen. And California's like, no, they can't be. Yes, they are by constitution. Critical race, right? Let me give an example of critical race theory in practice, in its purest form, in the state of Alabama. All right. Every year we test the living snot out of your kids because the number one life skill your kid needs to survive in the world is the ability to fill in bubbles correctly with a number two pencil. So we're going to test, 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 standardize. Every kid in the state's getting the same test. And then when it's over, we're going to lay it all out. We're going to look at each kid. All right. What score do they get in math and reading and science and all this kind of stuff? All right. Male or female? What grade? What race? Were the parents married? Did they wear blue that day? Do they have shoes on? Whatever. We're going to break down all these statistics. And then we're going to start lumping them into similar demographics. All the white kids here. All the Hispanic kids here. Well, we don't recognize Hispanic in Alabama. They're non-specified, whatever that is. Uh, so then we're going to break them down into groups. Okay, so as a demographic, as the biggest group possible, because we can't deal on the state level with all these individuals, what group needs the most help? So we ranked them. On average, an Asian descent child is going to score higher than everybody else in the school. As a people group, Asians score higher on standardized tests for whatever reasons. Extended family, they're good at math. Well, I, I don't know. You tell me. And then coming in second is white kids. And coming in third is your non-specified or Hispanics. And coming in at the bottom are black students. So what do we do about this? How do we catch up the different races and get them equal like they're supposed to be, right? So what we're going to have to do is come up with special race-related programs that focus more highly on some and change the standard for some, change the standard for others, so that we can get more equal numbers leading to more, in theory, more opportunities, more equitable outcome outside of the school in real life. So we had this thing called Plan 2020 in Alabama for a while. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to hurry because the bell rang and I'm ready to go home. Uh, in Plan 2020, we got a report card at the school. Every year we'd test and your school would get A, B, C, D, pass, fail, whatever, depending on how much you increased from the year before. 
right? So we'll test all your students. What percentage of your white kids scored on grade level, was the term, were proficient at grade level? By the eighth grade, you should be able to read this text. By the 10th grade, you should be able to solve this math equation. And, and that's what we did. And so the end goal by 2020, 91, I, I'm doing this off the top of my head, so forgive me if I'm a point or two off, but I believe it was 91% of Asian uh, American students, if you want to hyphenate, Asian descent students should be proficient at grade level. Make sense? All right. And then when you get to white kids, I think it was like 89%, something like that. Um, Hispanic slash non-specified was like 83%. And I believe black was 78. So right off the bat, you go, 78? Well, crap. No wonder they don't get enough, enough as many jobs and opportunities in the outside world. We only, they only have to master 78% of the material, whereas the Asian kids have to master 91% of the material. Yeah, that's exactly the point. But it was better than it was when we started. Everybody had to show improvement, and that demographic was starting so low compared to the others, standardized test-wise. But then we look at the test. What kind of test is it? Well, it has a lot of cultural things. And it has a lot of words that uh, people raised by non-college educated parents wouldn't use in the home. It was heavily oriented towards people who were raised in a dual family, a dual parent household with college educations and white collar jobs. Okay. So it's not really measuring so much intelligence and capabilities and all of that. It's measuring how many of these words did you learn? In what context did you hear these words in your home? And so we have to consider the background of each demographic to try to equalize things. We're going to drop the standards for some. We're going to raise the standards for others. Is that discrimination? Oh, yeah, it's the very definition of it. Is it necessary? Well, the powers that be deem that it is necessary, right? I'll give you another example. Quotas in the workforce. Coming out of college, you know, uh, high school, lettered in four varsity sports, 30 on the ACT, 135 IQ. I'm out of college. I've got a emergency medical license. I find out the Mobile Fire Department is hiring 35 firefighters. So I go down to the county uh, hiring agency, whatever it's called, and they say, ask for an application. They say, I'm sorry, we're an equal opportunity employer. Well, yeah, so I need the opportunity. No, 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 you don't understand. Equal opportunity employer means these jobs are reserved for minorities. But I'm here, I'm 6'5", I'm 220, I'm a four sport athlete with a college education and practice in the field. I wanna be a fireman. No, that's not how it works. See, your family probably provided you with more money and more opportunity and you probably went to a better school. What we're trying to do is give opportunities to people who wouldn't normally get opportunities to try to equalize the field a little bit. We're trying to make it, we're trying to help people get into this job so that they can offer their kids a better life and, and promote down the line. And that's kind of sort of the way it was explained to me. That's critical race. Critical race theory in practice right there. You see what I'm saying? Now, this has become a super hot topic politically because we because division and racism is a business in America. It's profitable. It brings you power. It brings you money. People make their living off of racism in America. So that's just become this big, huge thing. But I'm willing to bet you've all dealt with it. You probably went to school with it. Some of your older people, maybe not, but I, I bet you did. Court cases, integration, critical race theory, right? Uh, did some by other people run wild with it? Oh, yeah. Same thing we did with um, Common Core. 90% of what you heard on the news had nothing to do with Common Core. Common Core is teaching kids to hate America. That's not it at all. That's not it. And the teachers were all like, that's not what it is. That's not Common Core. But people swore. I had people, uh, you know, unfriend me on Facebook because I would give them documents and go, this is a Democrat thing over with America. That's funny. It was instituted by Republican Bob Riley. I have a hard time seeing where the Democrats are responsible. Well, they did. And all Common Core was was a set of standards. By this grade, these kids need to be able to outline this sentence. By this grade, you should be able to fix this equation. By this grade, you should, it was just a set of standards that everyone across the nation was supposed to aim for. It was non-racial critical race theory. 
trying to get everybody on the same page. And everybody lost their freaking minds over nothing. So this is what we're at again. Uh, is it controversial? I, I guess. Sure. Yeah, sure. Do I need it in my life? I, I can see where the, the school I work at, I can see where it'd be popular. Sure. My kids don't need it because my kids have all the resources in the world. They have two parents. They have four grandparents. We have, you know, if somebody loses their job, we have a massive extended family support system. They're all going to go to college if they want to go. It's not a big deal. Other people don't have these options. Other people need more help. Other people need a push. Other people need special uh, situations because they don't have that support structure in their life. So before you go crazy about critical race theory, look at it in its purest form, take out the politicians, and let's see where the rubber meets the road, what it actually is, and what we're actually doing in the schools with this stuff. I hope that helps. If you got any questions, send me a message. All right, y'all have a great day.